Welcome everyone to another edition of the Ryan and Rush Show. On today's episode, Jesse Edwards is a Mountaineer, Jimmy Bell is a football player, and Caleb Grill visits Morgantown. All ahead on the Ryan and Rush Show. And we welcome you back to your source for West Virginia sports. I'm Rambling Rush. He's Moneyline Mac. We are the Ryan and Rush Show, and we're getting right into it. Ryan, great news. Jesse Edwards is coming to Morgantown. He's a West Virginia Mountaineer. The center comes from Syracuse, comes to West Virginia, one of the best in the transfer portal. And, hey, joins Kerr. Caleb Grills visiting today. But, hey, a lot of great things going on for the Mountaineers. Yeah, Hugs and the staff got their much-needed rim protector. Um with the way Hugs wants to play defense, pressure the basketball, push everything to the baseline. You got to be able to have a rim protector uh, to erase mistakes because we take chances on the perimeter. We saw when Sags was here, how many mistakes he would erase at the back end of that press. So this will be the best shot blocker that Hugs has had since the Sags days at Press Virginia. Beyond the shot blocking ability, things we kind of see what he's capable on the offensive end and kind of how he's able to just totally complete the picture. Um, I think something that West Virginia, right, has been known for is either press Virginia or the defensive and kind of the grinding out uh, of the opponent. Now it seems like kind of part of this uh, recruiting and transfer portal, this round has definitely been more, let's make up more on the offensive side. Uh, mm-hmm. do, you, do you see, how do you see that Jesse Edwards fitting into that type of scenario? Well, he's more of a modern day big, in my opinion, more pick and roll type guy, rim runner, um, compared to the old fashioned big that Hugs has been so good with, with his back to the basket, throw to him at the block, the Devin Williams, the Kevin Joneses, mm-hmm. Derek Culver's. He's different. He's more of a modern big, kind of with the way the NBA has gone with these guys that are just rim runners and offensive rebounders and, and ball screens. So I, he's got a chance to really grow in a year because he's already got those skill sets that I talked about, but he's going to have a chance because we know one thing with hugs. He's going to throw the ball inside. I mean, he's done that for 30 plus years and he's going to continue to do so. So I see him improving his post skills with one of the best coaches of all time. So this is a, this is a really good decision by Jesse Edwards, in my opinion as well. Yeah, and they it's we've talked about this too before, Ryan. Is once we get recruits, you know, potential transfer portal guys to Morgantown, it's a very high success rate. I mean, he came to visit and he before he even left, he said yes. And they already were uh taking pictures of him, you know, announcing it, which is great to see. We also have Caleb Grill from Iowa State. He's uh he's on campus today. We think we're mm-hmm. we're I think leaning strongly towards that he will be a mountaineer as well. Um, what are what are your thoughts on Caleb? Uh, obviously a knockdown shooter. He shot the ball at a high clip with his years at Iowa State. Actually started at Iowa State, transferred to UNLV with TJ Otzelberger. Then when Otzelberger got to Iowa State, he followed him again. So obviously he had the incident, the unfortunate uh, incident behind the scenes to end his career where he didn't get to finish the year. But he's got a year of eligibility with the COVID situation because he was, a, I think, a soft, freshman or sophomore when the COVID eligibility extended for a year so yeah he would fit a need where a guy that can make shots in that eric stevenson role he's not as good a score as eric stevenson but for everybody that's watching him in the big 12 he's able to score the ball and he's proven it in the best league in america the last couple of years on winning teams too kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier ryan is that you know keity has left you know he's served his full eligibility it was an awesome. We kept calling him the glue all season wrong, yep. all, all season long, right? He was just, he could give it to you on the offensive end. He definitely could lock it down on the defensive end. The reason he was the glue, right? He would just stick to stick to guys. And, and, you know, it was, it was hard for them to score kind of that Javon Carter role, right? Is it's, I think it's great what the Mountaineers are doing, being able to get a lot of offensive guys in here with Kerr, uh, Jesse, um, uh, Probably Caleb, like we're leaning towards, and you know, Hughley's here at the end of the week, which you know may be a little interesting now that that uh, Jesse Edwards is coming, and we'll talk to the, about that here in a little bit. But how do you see the making up for someone that Keedy kind of on that defensive end, right? Is you you don't want to a problem we've seen a lot with West Virginia football, right? Is Neil Brown 
he'll try to overcompensate on one side of the football and then the other side goes to bad. You know, one year they're great on defense, the next year they're great on offense, but it's never, you know, coexists, right? How does the West Virginia basketball team not get caught into that trap? That's a great question, Rush. And, I mean, a guy like Jesse Edwards is one of the best rim protectors that we've had here. So it, he can erase some of the defensive deficiencies we may have next year. We're, I mean, we're still a long ways away from what our final roster would be. If I had to nitpick the roster right now, they don't really have a guy that can guard multiple positions mm -hmm. uh, at the wing position, a six, six guy. Maybe Josiah Harris turns into that. He showed flashes in his freshman year, but he's still young. He's going to be a sophomore. So if I had to nitpick, that would be the area you de And you definitely don't want to lose your identity of, I mean, Hugs has won so many games over the year. Yes. You want to be able to score the ball, but you also got to be able to get stops. So there is a fine line, like you said, where, you want to be able to get stops, but also have enough guys to be able to score the ball, especially in March. Kind of turn that, you know, defense into offense or mm -hmm. that that sort of thing. So as we kind of start talking about this, other storylines have gone on, of course, with Jeff Jesse Edwards. And this kind of broke before that was official is JBJ, our man, is going out for the <laughs> football team now. Um, and it's something, you know, we we were off last week. We we had other commitments that we had we had to take care of. Uh, but kind of looking at it last week, I was looking at the roster, you know, as a whole, right. We see players start as we bring people in, other people start being like, where is your exact place on this roster? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one that kind of stuck out was, was JBJ, right. Is, is I think it actually makes sense for him to go out for the football team, at least try it to see what he's capable of. But when you have, you know, a Jesse Edwards, when you have, you know, Wagi that's, you know, he or hurt towards the end of the year, but very athletic. Um, I actually really liked him coming off the bench. We kind of do that spark, give that spark to the team. You know, you got a Conquo. You have even Sumnik, who's, you know, started getting some serious minute at the end and shows some promise. So you kind of start talking about odd men out, right? And before that football news even broke is, you know, we were talking about it. It was like, ooh, you know, maybe a little tough here for, for JBJ. But – it seemed like that kind of came out naturally itself. Um, and, you know, we wish him luck. Hopefully things work out with football. It doesn't even say he's not going to be part of the basketball team, but he's definitely in that odd man, man out role. And I think he's able to shift it to a positive thing with this football opportunity. But we keep acquiring, you know, Caleb Grill. Um, you know, who knows what's going to go on with Hughley? Who knows what maybe a couple other guys is – who who are we talking about with odd men out? Like who's kind of that next like, ooh, you know, I, do we really have room for this player? I, I think it depends on who actually commits. I mean, if Caleb Grill commits, then you, you look at guys like Seth and Kobe, I think. It, they're going to be headed into their third year in the program. And I think with the transfer portal, that you see this where you'll get the initial wave of people that go into the portal. Then you'll get the second wave where – Guys come in on spring visits, guys commit, guys decommit, go to different schools or go to the draft. Then you start saying, all right, where do I stack up? Where do I fit in? Am I really going to play over this guy next year? Or they're bringing this guy in for a reason. Is the writing on the wall? And maybe one of those guys transfers it. And, like, if they transfer, it's not the end of the world. And you wish them the best of luck. But that's just kind of the day and age we live in where you average four transfers per program. It, per off season. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that that's, that's just what there's 1500. There's going to be 2000 names by the end of this transfer portal. And we're going to get that second wave and guys like Kobe, Seth, and, and, and maybe even a James Akunku. I'm not saying that any of them are transferring, but it's those guys that are usually going into their second, third year college that look, Hey, I do have a free transfer where I can make a jump. And obviously you get the grad transfer, uh, the free year where you don't have to sit out as well, but you get mm -hmm. one freebie with the NCAA right now. The kind of second, third year in between that, it, that seems to be the sweet spot where guys make the jump. I'm kind of, what kind of scares me about is with, with Kobe Johnson, right? Is I, I think he can be kind of that one to make up if we need that defensive, you know, guy to come in at the end of the game you know we're shooting a one and one you call that timeout you get your defensive line defensive lineup in there set and 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 saw it at so, iowa state 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Seth Wilson, I I get I really like Seth Wilson a lot. I mean, how he I mean he came in and really helped us out some games, but I get it. I mean, there's only so many people can eat, but it's just just need to be a well-rounded team. And I definitely think we are that team. We we can be that team, but I just a little nervous on the defensive end. I guess that's all I'm saying. Yeah, Rush, and I, I'd be lying to you if I didn't have the same concerns. I mean, we've been such a defensive program for all these years, and we're losing the best on-ball defender in the Big 12, arguably in the country, in Kedron Johnson. He's the best guy we've had on the ball since Javon Carter, who's playing – in the playoffs for the Milwaukee Bucks right now. Uh, Tyler Chang put out a stat today that he was eighth all time in deflection since we started keeping that Jeez. back in 2014. And we didn't press those other guys, JC, Dax, John Holton, Nate Adrian, all those great guards, Tariq Phillip. They kind of padded their stats because there were so many more possessions in the game. Keedy did it in the half court setting. And so did Gabe. Gabe was up there as well. So yeah, no, it definitely is a fine line where we still got to be a good defensive team, even with, bringing in more talent. And I think Hugs will mix it up maybe more defensively, maybe junk it up. One, three, one, we've seen in the past. He'll throw some two, three out there. I mean, Jesse Edwards came from Syracuse. He's definitely familiar with the two, three zone. So yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Well, that's, that's the next thing I was going to ask you is, is, do we now become almost a zone team? I think he'll definitely mix and match. I mean, he plays point drop a lot in the second halves of game to yeah. maybe switch up the tempo, kind of get teams out of their rhythm if they're just used to our man-to-man -man defense since we see everybody twice a year, three times in Big 12 play. So, yeah, no, I definitely think he may throw some more zone out more than he has in years past. Yeah, I'd say hey, it's a good way to – Unfortunately, other coaches throwing out zone has hurt us in the past. So we might as well hurt some <laughs> other teams with us throwing out some zone as we talk about uh, Jesse Edwards' old program in Syracuse and good don't old Bayheim. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to. Sorry, to, but hey, it might it might have to finally come back around where, where we're running some of it. And I think that's what I was talking about is is if I really hope Seth Wilson and, and Kobe Johnson stay. Those guys have been awesome, and they've been part of the reason we made it back in the tournament last year. But I guess if you were asking me um, which one at this point is probably provides more value to the Mountaineer program, I might, and I'm talking it's it's the slightest amount, probably lean Kobe because, you know, we need people to make it up for on the defensive end. So, well, hey, that, that's the reason they play games. And we got we still have a lot of time before that happens. And I have a feeling, you know, the old Hall of Famer can can make a couple adjustments. So, hey, it's a good no problem to have being in the position that you're in. Uh, rather have too many people coming in and sort through than being like, oh, hey, we need you over here. So, like you said, all good problems. Um, kind of to finish up basketball talk, and then we'll talk a little bit about the baseball team and how well they're doing here, Ryan. Um, but we talked about it earlier. Hugh Lee's coming from, from Pitt. Um, I think he's at Ole Miss right now, uh, but he'll be making his, his trip to Morgantown this weekend. How... How, what do you see his chances of now joining? Because I kind of, when it was first announced, I'm like, oh, he's definitely joining West Virginia. He'll stay local. He'd love to go against Pitt again, his old school. But now, you know, with Jesse Edwards, I, it's, I don't know if it's going to happen. Because I think the, also the last time we saw something like this is when we saw Culver and Toshibwe, and we kind of all know how that, you know, ended. So I don't know. What do you think? I mean, you're the one that's been in the locker room. What do you think about this yeah like you said he's at Ole Miss I I bet he probably goes to Ole Miss to be honest you it's kind of like what we say like if we can get him on campus we feel pretty good about it because we think we know what Morgantown is and we knock down that barrier of what the perception is on the outside looking in Chris Beard's at Ole Miss now he's yeah. pretty good at recruiting getting these transfers in he's bringing he's not bringing you in a visit just to wine and dine for his own sake I mean he he wants to get that thing done so I would love Hughley. I, I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago. I, he's more that traditional big that Hugs has had yes. with the Devin Williams, uh, the Kevin Jones, back to the basket, good feel around the rim, good touch. So this the stuff that I think Jesse Edwards is actually going to improve upon over these next couple years. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I don't I don't think we're going to get him to personally just I, because I I, I think. You usually don't see grad transfers at the same position like like Edwards and Hughley both go to the same program. But hey, crazier things have happened. That's true. They would have to both be 
for it to work out, they would both have to like kind of understand that they would be splitting time. But hey, when they're both out there, you know, especially if one gets in foul trouble, the other one steps out. If if they're both okay with that, then yeah, it could could be an amazing thing. It could be a great thing. But then you could have kind of that contention, and you almost maybe feel like you have to have both out there, and then you know, Trey Mitchell's playing time comes into question and, Correct. you know, creates that domino effect. I will say there will be, you know, we're talking now about who's the odd man out uh, or odd men out. But if, if Hughley commits here, there will definitely, <laughs> there will definitely be some odd men out. So I, I, I think if Hughley ex- except here, we know JBJ is for sure going to be a football player. Yeah. And I think now that we're in the NIL era and I'm, everybody sees it on Twitter, what uh, supposedly what these guys are getting, uh, nobody exactly knows what the actual facts are. Everybody says that they got a source and they know another source. So yeah, but you just don't know what, what's important to these guys, to be honest, maybe NIL isn't important to a certain guy. Maybe it's all that another guy cares about. Maybe somebody just wants to go play for hugs just because he's the winningest active coach, or maybe they just, like being closer to home, like Trey Mitchell. I mean, it's sure. there's a lot of different factors in this NIL transfer portal era that's so new to everybody that factor into these decisions where in the past you'd be like two grad transfers that are big. So they're not going to the same school. But, hey, crazier things are have happened and are happening around the country. So we'll see. We'll see. Got to probably see about – we'll find out here about Caleb Grill here. Probably, my guess is probably within the next 48 hours, uh, and then we'll see how this weekend goes with Hughley. And then I'll tell you what – well, that'll definitely create a, a domino effect as we talked about. And Hey, it's been, it's been a fun transfer portal season to cover Ryan. I'll at least say that we haven't been bored by any means at all. Our first season covering this and Hey, it's, it's kept us going, dude. Oh yeah. No, you're not going to be bored in this transfer portal era. It's uh it's year round. I mean, it's kind of, I'm not going to lie. Like it was one of the reasons why it kind of drove me out where it's not really like, it, it's just a different era. It, it's yeah. different. And it's, it's truly is year round where you got to almost recruit your own guys at, at, at this point. So yeah, no, it's definitely does not lack content. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, Ryan, before, as we wrap up the show, want to give a shout out to the West Virginia baseball team. Um, hey, took two of three in Stillwater Mm -hmm. uh, doing, doing an excellent job, you know, especially after kind of bounce back from that Kansas series playing pit uh, our good, the good old backyard brawl at PNC park on Wednesday. And then we have TCU here this weekend. We'll be at the game on Friday. Ryan, if you see us come say hi to, to the Ryan and Russ show. Yep. Uh, I would love to see you there at the good old ballpark. And Hey, especially on Wednesday, man, the baseball team needs to keep rolling, beat, beat pit. Yeah, no, they need to win Wednesday. But, I mean, technically, it's more important that they win the weekend series, but you need to win this weekday game. This is an exception. There, yeah, sometimes the moral win is a little bit better yeah. than the the technical win. So, hey, it, it, we're getting to that time, and, hey, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, be hosting a regional game here soon. I, I'll, ballpark would be going nuts. That would, that would be so cool. So, We'll see how it turns out. Go Mountaineers there. And uh, hopefully we'll get some no- more news breaking here later on this week. We'll also be at the gold, b- blue and gold game this weekend. If I can talk, um, uh, come say hi to us there. And we'll be doing a preview episode later this week as well. And <laughs> as of now, we schedule should be confirmed. We have, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna say who, who, but we have a West Virginia legend that will be interviewed and, If all goes according to plan, the episode will be released next week. So be on the lookout for that. But anyway, love you all. Go Mountaineers, and we'll see you again soon. Go Mountaineers.